Ah, what is up everybody? I'm in the shop here today and I cleared out the space. The Falcon's out there. We're waiting on parts for a tie rod. Um, I know we had talked about that the thing had been hit. I'm definitely making sure that thing's safe. Um, but yeah, going through that whole deal. We're on parts waiting, so, you know, I'm feeling kind of frisky. And if you guys that are OG members have known me for a long time, I have a tendency to do whatever the fuck I want. And uh, <laughs> I just, I don't have the cash to like finish this. I have a couple bucks to throw at something, but I'm pretty, pretty broke. Like I'm pretty transparent on here. And we got married this year. I built two cars and I didn't have a job for like four or five months. So I got a couple bucks, but not enough to like make a dent in what I need to do to this. It's not going anywhere, but like I wanna do something. So it hit me the other day. I have this motor. So this motor right here is the one that was out of Snowflake. My suit, I wanna say C10, Silverado. It was a long bed. It was before I got Bowser. It was my work truck. So I have that and I have a T56. Now I'm not gonna put the T56 in it uh, because there's like, I have to make it a mid shift conversion. And I also need a master cylinder. I need a lot of things for it just to make it right and uh, to make it work without doing other things. You know, there's options, etc. But I do have the Turbo 400. Where is it? I don't want to flip around. I'm being lazy. This Turbo 400 is out of the GTO that we just sold. It has a converter. It has a shift kit. It runs great. Pink fluid. And I have pretty much everything to make those two up. And I have a bunch of fuel pumps. And I have a micro squirt. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Where's the micro squirt? It's in here. I bought it off Turbo Bullet. I like having stuff like this around, so I went and bought one for 175 bucks. It's in this box. I don't have a harness, but I have that. I have manifolds. Heck, you know what else I got? I got I got freaking motor mounts, dude. I got freaking ow. This stepped on some shit. I got adapter plates. Got multiple sets of adapter plates. All I need to do is build like a trans cross member and exhaust out of used stuff. So I think I'm gonna do that. Let's do like a budget build. I got some birthday money. <laughs> My mom gave me some birthday money. And then uh, what else? Yeah, man, we got this. This isn't gonna be a bad deal. So we're gonna pull this motor and trans out of this thing today. <laughs> Curveball. I don't know. This is, this is what I'm doing. It just makes sense to me right now. It'll sound pretty good too, you know, this truck. We have the Charlotte over here. Let's flip around real quick. So if you haven't met Charlotte yet, you're new, etc. This is Charlotte, so my C, my C10, it's a 64. Big back window or get out. So we have the big back window truck. It's a six, six cylinder, the three speed. But I have a friend that has a truck, but no motor. So he wants maybe like this radiator. He wants the motor, the trans the shifter, and I may even sell him the tank. He doesn't know that yet, but he wants like the three speed on the floor shifter. So I might sell him this tank because it's new with a new sending unit. And then I'll build one back here, you know, just do like a nice little square tank at the machine shop. I have some lowering springs. I think we could do this for like the mega budget is what James calls it. He kind of pumped me up on this. So I got to give him some credit. We're pretty good influences on each other most of the time, but I was just having one of those bad car guy days the other day, and I was like, man, I want to do something fun. I'm feeling, like, frisky, and he was like, dude, finish your C10, cheap, whatever, because, you know, I was venting to him that I just, I love this truck, and I haven't done anything to it yet, so. Somehow, I'm going to get this over to the shop. It kind of runs half-assed, but the carb, and it's just, it runs like dick, but whatever. We'll try to get it over there and start yanking some shit out. You ain't running for crap. As I hit the brakes, locked up. We're trying to get it out from over that side of the yard, so it's okay. I always like the ones that play hard to get, so bring it on, Charlotte. So we got the, the truck all uh, pushed in. Falcon's out for now, getting some help. Whoop. So it shouldn't be too bad. These you guys know these things come out super easy. Got a couple more wires, and I think the most difficult thing is gonna be getting all this shift linkage figured out nicely. Uh, rad's out. Let's get this thing popped out super easy. Got a relationship. 
So we got the drive shaft out and Alex just threw the yoke back into the rear. Um, this was pretty simple as far as disconnection. So we didn't really video much, but got it hooked up on the chain. It's pretty much already loose. And then uh, we're gonna use our old pal, the GoPro here. Watch the rest of it. I feel like that was pretty solid. Probably not super safe at all, but yeah. Ah, we don't do super safe things here. to do this since like day one of getting this drive shaft radiator alex's motor power washer pretty clean day we'll do some more but man it came out pretty good it's like this thing this thing wants me and it does not want a six cylinder point of rule here no domestic straight sixes or, well, except for this one. Oh shit, there is a domestic straight six here. That car. Is that thing? Yeah. You can fix that. Not for long, I guess. I don't know, at some point I'm gonna have to do it. <sighs> That's it for today on Charlotte, man. Holy crap, we just kind of like mobbed out on that. It probably wasn't like the craziest video, but uh, you know, I just had uh, some built up energy and I wanted to take it out on that. Let me show you really quick some of the parts we have already so you can understand why this makes no sense to you, but it makes sense to me. And then uh, we'll uh, probably cut this thing off. Cool, it's a low car shifter. It's kind of different, it's not like as far as like my style, but it's kind of rad and I got it for a deal on eBay when I was working overseas. I was just like on the internet all the time. So I got that and then like the 400 that we said. And uh, what else did I have? Oh yeah, these are, like five inch drop springs for the rear. So we can drop the rear and then we have motor mounts and adapter plates, which we already mentioned. And then the front, um, we're gonna have to just go through the brakes. We're gonna leave it drum. <laughs> we're just gonna, you know, fix them up, whatever we need, like rock auto stuff. Then we have some steel wheels. I'll get some tires. Um, yeah, not too bad. Uh, more over here, we're gonna get going on this thing. I have a little bit of a video on it, but this is a motor I picked up um, not too well, like a couple years ago, actually, I guess. And I had a rat hold. It just needed to be gone through. And, uh, it spins over gorgeous. 
So Alex actually pulled it apart. You kind of wanted to learn about the LS stuff. He has a 240. Oh, your 240's here. We can show it. We'll show you guys the 240. But um, he has another one that's a convertible, which is cool. And we're going to build this for the for the 240. We have like a good amount of stuff ready. So what do we have? We have the heads are in the shed. Then he has this whole cam kit that we got from Hangman Performance, which is my friend Michael Page. This is a 228R, right? Yep. 228R. And did we do, I think we do platinum springs. Uh, yeah, dual springs and chrome push rods. Okay, yeah. So we got all that good stuff there. Pretty much he just needs the most expensive, most difficult part to find which is the T56 uh, to make that thing rip. Um, let's go. Let's. Hey, you want to show us your red car? Sure. Yeah, we're going to check out the red car. It's over here. What year is this thing? It is uh, 92. 92. Whoop, 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 whoop. Some drip boy shit. I like it. 92. Those wheels, though. Wheels are worth probably more than the car. <laughs> probably worth more than all the cars that I have. Pop, pop, pop. Give her the love. Give her the, uh, zoom. Nope. That's not it. Yeah. She said, try again, sir. 245, man. Here we go. Get it? I don't believe you. Oh, you did get it. Yeah. There you go. Well, he keeps it clean, though. Relatively. What is this? Uh, it's an SR20. SR20. Out of uh, Sylvia. It's a turbo, right? Yep. A little T25 turbo. Oh, look at that little dude. Yeah. A little tiny bottom mount. A little, little. Does That's it? the, the blow-off I replaced. Oh, yeah, you're talking about exploding that. Exploding the Chinese one. And then is the probably working a little bit better than the exploded one, right? Uh, Red Bull, Red Bull, <laughs> oil, or coolant catch can. You're probably like sponsored by them by now with all the. Oh, fuck. They shouldn't. Probably have a heart attack, they did. <laughs> yeah. It's just a cool little street car. That's pretty sick. Jeez Louise, the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I just want Sick. One of the last things it needs is carpet. And I uh, finally got the carpet in and we'll get the carpet and then get a paint. And paint? This done. is like the nicest paint I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm just gonna for, get for me. I'm gonna get it resprayed so I can have my paints match. Oh okay. And this is probably how the car will stay, just pulling through the little streetcar while we build the black one. Black one! Sick. Yeah. Black this one. Is the guy, these are the guys that you said are the business, right, villains? Oh, yeah. These guys are awesome. They make, like, they, all kinds uh, of 240 drift parts or something? Yeah, and their whole deal is they want to make affordable stuff. That dual caliper mod. Is that theirs? From them. And they supply the, the caliper, the mounting bracket all the instructions is this the, their handbrake too yep that's their handbrake with a super legit mount you kind of can't see it but it actually bolts around the shifter to the trans tunnel oh that's sick yeah i had to do a little interior cutting to make it fit with everything in there but it's real low-key and everything fit pretty much nova <laughs> sick do you, are, you put this back on or no front what you put the bumper back on or no I'm going to, yeah. Once I get them paint matched. I'm Sick. tired of running around with 50 shades of red. <laughs> Do you watch, what is this? The... Evangelion? Evangelion? However you want to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty much it for today. Thanks for all the help, Alex. You're welcome. Easy, chill day on uh, Sunday, holiday weekend, and now it's time to work on his motor, and then maybe I'll actually eat something besides cake. After all the cake you ate, I don't think you need anything else. I need more cake. No. <laughs> I'm out, guys. Peace. We got it pretty pretty clean uh, last night. This thing was caked, you know, and now it's not so bad. Um, I'm not doing anything. I'm not painting it. I'm not doing anything. So I'm not even going to take this box out right now just because I don't even want to freaking deal with, you know, the. this is just simple as shit to get you motivated, to get me motivated. Simple, simple. So this is the stock cross member for the bell housing to bolt to the trans. Um, this has got to come out, um, but these are all riveted. So if you've never worked on an old C10, 
everything on C10s is riveted and it's freaking god awful. So what we're gonna use is our little buddy here, a Sawzall. And we're gonna just Sawzall it off as clean as we can um, and get it out of the way for now. And there's another cross member back here that houses the emergency brake cable setup. Uh, I think that can stay, I'm not positive. Pretty sure it can. And if it can't, so we deal, we can get that popped out. I wanna get this cross member out and then I want to probably do the uh, motor and trans, maybe set them in there and start getting a cross member built for the Turbo 400. Um, so here's the motor. <laughs> It still has the, uh, the the flex plate on it, the right flex plate from when I pulled it out of the truck. So it, it had an ADE, has the right flex plate, has block offs in the back. This is the, you know, it has 317s, this is a six liter. These are CNC ported and it has like a GM hot cam in it. Um, so it sounds pretty good. If you guys remember my silver uh, 2500 Silverado had, that was the motor that was in it. So it sounds pretty good. This is the Turbo 400 out of the GTO. Like I said, I just cleaned it up with some brake clean. It's in pretty good shape. This gasket sucks. It's like the B&M one, so it might need a gasket, but it's enough to to put in. Um, there's a mount in the shed. I can grab from another trans. And then the truck pan. We're just going to leave the truck pan for now. Why not? I don't know. It's already on there. We're doing the least, the least, uh, path of least resistance here. So today the goal is to get the trans and the motor mounted up i think and then get them into the truck i think that's probably the best bet you know you could easily be like oh i should run the fuel lines oh you should do this you should do that like just get it in get it in the freaking truck and then you can do that other stuff um so that's kind of my plan uh we'll get this cut out right now and then uh probably push start pushing the truck forward it would be maybe nice to clean up the and i'm not gonna do it <laughs> i'm not gonna do it for another day whenever we eventually down the road we're gonna put the t56 in this truck but right now i was looking at parts just to give you guys an idea it'd be another almost 800 dollars worth of parts to get the t56 in here they're just not cheap man they're not and no matter how you cut it just putting a t56 in isn't cheap so even though i have one and everything that you would think you need so at any rate Let's get it cutting. All right, so uh, here we go. Cross members out. So I kind of saved you guys watching me unless you guys kind of wanted to, I'm sorry, but this was just brutal work. So I just got to it. I really need to buy myself a proper air chisel or air hammer um, because that just makes life really easy. And uh, you know, I, I have one, but it's just garbage. It doesn't have the balls to get through rivets. So what I do is I actually use a chisel and a sledge and I sharpen the chisel on the um the grinder over there and then like whenever I move the truck you'll probably see the rivet heads there's probably a couple around here well yeah that's all I do is I just go in and then I hit the top of the rivet heads on top of the frame with the chisel and the sledge and then once it gets pretty close like honestly I got them so clean like not bragging but I just I'd done a lot of them and uh, I got pretty good at it <laughs> and you get super tired like for sure like my forearms are toast right now swinging the sledge but yeah if you get it sharp enough and you hit it right the right angle like of the the chisel I pretty much like as soon as I got it it just like this fell um and I did it in pieces so like I sawzalled the cross member in half and then I sawzalled the weight off of it so it was just these pieces hanging and then these four pieces need to come off it just kind of makes it easy so the top ones i chiseled and then since these were on the bottom of the frame um you know like the heads were at the bottom of the frame there i actually just hit it with a flap wheel which is like kind of another thing so i just hit it with a flap wheel and then once the flap wheel has it like pretty you know i can get it to where it's pretty flat i'm almost better with the chisel and then once it's pretty flat i just hit them hit them with a punch get them out super easy I and mean, i'm sure you guys have all done rivets but if you haven't that's a little tech tip because it took me a while man I, the first couple i did just kicked my ass um let me flip around one more time so it's gonna stay like this um i i cleaned it as you guys know and i like stuff like this so i might do one more round of like oven cleaner and pressure washer um and maybe like scrubby the back here on the firewall but as of right now, this is gonna stay. And I think the air box is gonna stay too, um, like I was saying. So 
it's gonna pretty much look like this. I ordered a radiator off Amazon. There was like a $130 three core aluminum radiator. So we'll see if that fits. If that fits, I'd like to do like a Crown Vic fan or a Volvo fan. I have one of each in the shed. Um, I got a micro squirt. I, I think I told you yesterday in the first part of this video, but I called Mike from EFI Source and chatted with him for a bit and we got a plug and play uh, harness for this thing. So that's not the cheapest thing in the world relatively it is i think for like time and money and shit and like they're pretty nice um i think they're like 275 or something like that um so yeah if you guys want one of those from efi source or diy i would i don't know man it's not a bad deal like i picked up the micro off of turbo bullet for 175 like a while ago and then got the harness so i mean for a plug and play it's not a bad thing i'll need to get connectors i think it comes with like ev6 connectors and then i'm just gonna run stock injectors so i'll just get like little adapters on amazon they're like 18 bucks uh, what i want to do with fuel i think i talked about it a little bit and i changed my mind i'm gonna copy tad taylor you hear that tad so tad had one of these trucks he had a 68 7 whatever but uh he just basically welded the bung on the bottom of it of the the tank inside the cab well the tank inside this cab's brand new it's got a brand new sending unit it works fine um so what i'm gonna do is do a wix filter which is like the corvette filter regulator if you guys don't know and that'll have just the one outlet going forward and then it has a return right off of it so we can return back to the sending unit that'll be cool and then this is from nathan shaw that he had sent in that care package i have some pumps but they're chinese and this one's an actual bosch 044 um, and it has fittings so we're just gonna do a dash 10 bung off the bottom of the tank i'm gonna pull it out take it apart, you know, pull it out, take the sending unit out, clean it out, get it prepped to weld, drill a hole, weld a bung on the bottom of it. And then, uh, yeah, we should be good. Just, you know, you know, keep the tank pretty full or whatever. But honestly, like stuff like that is silly, but it's like, you never have a problem with it. So it'll just be this pump, the filter regulator. And then, um, I'm going to probably do a truck intake. I have a bunch of intakes out here. Let me show you. With the, f with the fuel stuff too, I have a bunch of the stuff already in that drawer. So like, I just need some line. Oh no, I already have line. But yeah, here's all like my intakes I was going over. I'd love to use this Trailblazer one, but uh, I don't have rails. So, and then I need an adapter plate. With these, I can make one work. And I'll just use this one, this, this set of rails, cause it has a uh, uh, single feed. So no, no regular or anything. I think this one might be one of these was off the truck, I think, that of the Silverado, but whatever. Between the three of these, I'll make one truck intake. Apologize for that pump being super loud. Yeah, between the three of those, I'll make one truck intake, run a truck intake for now. Not a huge deal. I mean, it'd be cool to run the TVSS, but I don't have uh, injectors or rails, so there it is. On my run to the store, I'm going to grab some Parker push lock for the trains. <laughs> I know people I hate that going on trans, but I don't know. I haven't had an issue with it, knock on wood. I'm just going to keep doing it. So we're going to get some push lock fittings. Uh, no, I already have push lock fittings. Sorry, I have, we're going to get a bunch of line. And then check this out. Like, this is why I was saying, like, this truck build is just kind of fun. Like, I already had these fittings. Like, I forgot. Like, I just, I've accumulated so much shit that I, like, have the things I need. So I have that. Um, and then I have the fittings in here already like a pile of fittings so i have fittings it's all my fuel stuff and then i'm gonna use the nylon fuel line with uh this will come out of the filter regulator and then this will go to the rail and then we'll have i have another one in here that will be the return so like this will be the feed and then the return and then uh yeah easy peasy man it's, it's not too bad this is trippy as hell. There's actually the correct seat underneath this cover. This one, that is weird, man. It's freaking cool though. I like this a lot. I think this is the stock. I don't know. I just went to go pull this back and I was kind of like, what the hell? Yeah, man, it's badass. 